Here I've got two related interesting number theory probability type problems. So the first one is, what is the probability that the last two digits of seven to the n are four and three? In other, in other words, as n ranges over all natural numbers, what's the probability that it ends in 43? Okay, so we're gonna look at this just by kind of guessing and checking and exploring. And then after we see the solution to this first one, we're gonna revisit a very similar problem, but look at some of the number theoretic ideas that are in the background. Okay, so first off, I wanna make a chart of seven to the n, but I don't wanna make a chart of the values of seven to the n just in general. I wanna reduce them modulo 100. So let's maybe recall what I mean by reduction modulo n. And what I mean is that a is congruent to b mod n if and only if n divides b minus a. But that's equivalent to saying that a and b have the same remainder when divided by n. Okay, so if you take an arbitrary number, let's maybe call it A, then it will be congruent to its last two digits modulo 100. Because think about it, if you divide something by 100 and keep the remainder, which is essentially what's happening up here, then you just get the last two digits. So what that means is we want to calculate 7 to the n mod 100, and that's in fact the chart that we'll make. So let's start building that chart. We'll have n, and then we'll have 7 to the n. And let's run through some values of n. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then hopefully we see some structure at that point. So 7 to the 0 is going to be 1. 7 to the 1, that's obviously 7. 7 squared is 49. Then next, 7 cubed is 343. But 343 can be replaced with just 43 because again, we're working mod 100. So let's maybe notice that right here. We're working mod 100. And now let's calculate 7 to the 5. And now let's calculate 7 to the 4. So we could do 7 times 343. But since we're working mod 100, we'll just do 7 times 43. But that turns out to be 301. But 301 is congruent to 1 mod 4. That means we've landed in a position where this pattern continues to repeat. So that means 7 to the 5. Well, that'll be 7 to the 4 times 7. So we get a 7 here. And then next... 7 to the 6, well, that's going to be 7 to the 5 times 7, but that's just going to be 49, and then so on and so forth. So it turns out that 7 to the n can only take on 1, 2, 3, 4 different values, and each of these values are equally likely because they continue repeating like that. So since they take on four values that are equally likely, and this is one of the values, our probability is one quarter. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this. We'll look at some definitions that make this idea kind of precise, and then we'll look at one more. Okay, so now that we looked at our first example, I wanna look at some precise ideas from number theory that will really provide some context for this first one and allow us to look at the second one. So the first thing that I want to recall is Euler's totion function, sometimes called Euler's phi function. So it's defined so that phi of n equals the number of positive integers between 1 and n that are relatively prime to n. So in other words, their GCD with n is equal to 1. So notice if you've got like the number 6, then phi of 6 is equal to 2 because there are only two numbers between 1 and 6 that are relatively prime to 6. Those are 1 and 5. Now here's a little result related to the Euler phi function. If n has the following prime factorization, so p1 to the r1 all the way up to pk to the rk, then phi of n is equal to n times 1 minus 1 over p1 all the way down to 1 minus 1 over pk. So that gives you a nice computable way to find phi of n. 
Next, there's this thing called Euler's theorem. And that says that if we have a number which is relatively prime to n, then a to the phi of n is congruent to one mod n. That brings us to this notion of the order of an integer modulo n. So that's this definition. So we say that m is equal to the order of a mod n. That's how we read that. If m is the smallest number such that a to the m is congruent to one mod n. So it's the smallest thing that if you raise a to that power, you get back to the identity element. So sometimes that might be phi of n, but sometimes it won't be phi of n. And here's a proposition which is easy to prove, and that is the order of an element modulo n always divides phi of n. So that's pretty clear from Euler's theorem and then the division algorithm. And then we've got this uh, final theorem which has to do with the notion of primitive roots modulo n. And that is there exists some number a where the order of a modulo n equals phi of n. In other words, it achieves that highest possible order if and only if n is a special form. So it can be 2, 4, it can be p to the k where p is a prime, or it can be 2 times p to the k where p is a prime. Okay, great. So now that we've got these ideas under our belt, let's look at this second question. Now we're ready to look at the second question. What's the probability that the last two digits of 9 to the n are 4 and 9? In other words, 49. So and this is as n ranges over all positive integers. Okay, so again, we're going to work modulo 100, but we're going to keep an eye on those things that we calculated or that we recalled in the previous board. So we know that for all A, where A is an integer, such that the GCD of A with 100 is equal to 1, A to the phi of 100 will be congruent to 1 mod 100. And that's by Euler's theorem, sometimes called Euler's generalization of Fermat's theorem. Also, we know the only prime factors of 100 are 2 and 5, so we can calculate phi of 100 very easily. So notice phi of 100 will be equal to 100 times 1 minus half times 1 minus fifth. So let's see, 100 times 1 minus half, that's going to be 50. And then we need to multiply that by 4 fifths. So notice we get 40. Okay, great. And also notice that 100 is not of one of those special forms that we saw on the last board. It's not a power of a prime and it's not twice a power of a prime. So what that tells us is that there do not exist any numbers A such that the order mod 100 of A equals 40. But what that tells us, along with a proposition on the previous board, is that the order mod 100 of A has to lie in a set of divisors of 40, not including 40. So that means it can be 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, or 20. Now we just need to figure out what is the order of 9 mod 100. And we'll do that by, again, just making a chart. So our chart will be n, and then 9 to the n mod. So let's get this chart built. OK, so I'll let you guys do the calculation on your own, and I'll just fill in all of the values here, and then we'll go over these values. OK, so after making all of the necessary calculations, we see that 9 to the n mod 100 can take on 10 different values. So 9 to the 0 is clearly 1, and then we go 9, 81, 29, 61, 49, 41, 69, 21, 89, and 1 again. And so that would be the 10th power. And then it'll repeat after that 10th power. So again, we get a total of 10 numbers from this output. Now we just have to look, is 49 one of our numbers? And it is, which tells us that this probability is 1 over 10. Okay, and that's a good place to stop.